And one of the reasons I write for young people also about these topics is because the questions you get are so amazing. They, they just kind of spark new ideas. But also when they say, that really happened? <laughs> and you want to say, yes, that really happened. <laughs> and it's still happening. <laughs>
And the conversations that were happening back in 1955, in 1963, in 1968, Interestingly enough, those same conversations are happening right now. So it's very important that young people know where these conversations began, and that will help them determine how to take the conversation forward. I think pictures are really important. It gives us assumptions. It's the main part of a story. It's kind of like the base of the story. Um, especially for little kids versus the text and um, it helps them it's really interactive and um, it makes it gives the book spice and it makes it more interesting I mean I never thought growing up that I always I always like to make pictures but I never thought growing up that that would be something that was important. It was just something that, that I enjoyed. So you never know what's, what's gonna be important and what's gonna change things. Imagination is good, but sometimes you have to see what it actually looks like. And I think that the civil rights movement is one of those topics where you have to have images versus what it was in your head so you can kind of understand what's going on. It's certainly wonderful to utilize illustration to explain uh, words that uh, we write in, in a book. I mean, the fact is, pictures tell a, a story. A, 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 a picture can tell a, 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 a thousand words, it's said from time to time. Uh, for me personally, I, growing up in a house where my father is Jerry Digby, the well-known illustrator, um, I always had books around and books with images of African-Americans and uh, black children and children of all cultures. And something about telling a story for me is just very like touching. And it's the way I express my artwork. As a child, I always made lots of images. I always told stories through pictures. So this is a way that I get to take my talent, put it into books and present them to other children. And it's important for children to see themselves in books um, as black children. It's important for other children that aren't black to see black children in books. I think what's beautiful about this whole experience is the, the connection between the uh, Picture the Dream exhibition, a bunch of picture books, that visual literacy, again moving it to the stage and sparking those dialogues, and there are many visuals in the Picture the Dream exhibition that make people think, what would I do at a drinking fountain where there are signs? What would I do if I can't ride a bus or I'm relegated to the back? What would I do if I saw violence? Well, I have always enjoyed writing. Um, it is just one of the pleasures of life for me to be able to write down um, how I'm feeling or my story or poetry or whatever. So I've, I've always enjoyed that form of expression. And picture books are just the ideal way to introduce so many concepts and lessons that we're teaching. So um, I, I use picture books daily in my classroom to introduce a topic and to give us a kind of jumping off point for our discussions. And I really felt strongly about introducing young people to people like James Orange and Jose Williams and Ralph Abernathy and Dorothy Cotton. And, you know, that they need to know those names as well as Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks. I have a dream that enough is enough. You don't have to necessarily speak in front of crowds to make your appearance or to make your mark on the world. I mean, it would be amazing and it would be powerful if we just woke up and um, gun violence was over, but we have to do the work for that to happen. I've talked to high school students. Um, we do a King Day program every year, and I will ask them, you know, how old do you think the people were in the Civil Rights Movement? And it's always amazing to me, because they say, well, you know, in their 40s, you know, 35, 40. And I'm <laughs> Those saying, no. Those old fogies in their you know, 40s. Yeah, and I'm saying, no, <laughs> your age and younger. And right. then I show them the, the photographs of all these young people, you know, with their Sunday dress on, mm -hmm. marching somewhere or going somewhere, knowing they're going to jail, uh -huh. and younger than they are. And it's always a sobering moment for them, right. because I think 
think as long as they could say, oh, that's people who are 40 who are supposed to do that work, mm -hmm. people who are in their 30s, not me, mm -hmm. and then you show them six-year-olds and nine-year-olds and 12-year-olds who are being arrested and taken to jail. There's plenty of room for more activism, for more uh, understanding of what was at stake and what was sacrificed to get us where we are now. And, uh, and there are things, you know, we don't have to march, but we have to vote. You know, we have to do things in a different way to support our movement because we haven't gotten there yet. You know, I think the way we keep the momentum going is to embed these conversations in our curriculum. Um, as a teacher, I, I feel very strongly that our curriculum needs to reflect the complete American story. And the civil rights movement was a pivotal point. It changed the landscape of this country, the direction of this country completely. I want to say, young people, we're depending on you. And books are a means to do that. And books kind of meet kids where they live because kids spend so much time in school and they spend so much time with their families. And a book is a way to kind of bridge that gap and to be able to say to young people, this is something for you. It's something you can hold on to. And it's something that you can pass on. Acceptance is. Acceptance is. Acceptance is. Acceptance is. Acceptance is. The respect. Awareness. Warmth. Keeping an open mind. Not just tolerance. Putting away your biases. Inclusivity. When you feel welcome. Being able to take something for what it is. Regardless of how someone may act. Like you can truly be yourself. Being welcomed into a community, being who you are. Valuing the differences in others. Treating each other how you'd like to be treated. Feeling safe to share your passions and opinions without worrying about being judged or discriminated against. Including everybody and making everybody feel good. If everyone does a small difference and you put it together, since there's seven billion people on this planet, we will make one big difference together.